Since y'all loved my ranking videos so much the last time I did it, I'm going to do something totally new that's going to blow your mind. I am going to rank the spread offense. Let's get into it. So for starters, this spread offense is what I like. These are my spread uh, offenses that I think are the best in the past two decades. If you don't like that, put it in the comments below what I should rank next. And let's get into it. We've got a cast of characters that I want to show you what we're going to use in place of the ranking. So we're going to rank or uh, Chip Kelly's Oregon Ducks. We're going to do Mike Leach because you know I love Mike. We're going to do Gus Malzahn in the uh, uh, Auburn offense because, you know, everyone and their brother loves running that. We're going to do Joey uh, Saltwater, Fishwater. I mean, I mean Lane Kiffin's offenses, and if you don't think that he is actually good at it, you're, you're mistaken. We're going to do Baylor when it was at Art Bryles. We're going to do Paul Johnson because a lot of people I know when I throw in spread, you're going to be like, hey, what? where's the flex bone? Here it is. It's in here. We have got Lincoln Riley, and we've got LSU's uh, offense. So how we rank these? We rank them as a face melter, meaning they're unbelievable. And when you think of face melts, this is the offense you think of. God tier, which means they should be ran at a high level in college, high school, middle school. doesn't matter where they're ran. It's going to be good. Decent to run in high school, so this means that you're going to do really good at the high school level or lower. But anything higher, you shouldn't run it. Go back to middle school. This is just middle school ball. It works at that level, but don't do it. Youth ball only. That means, you know, yeah, this is what kids need to run at the youth, lo uh, youth level. And then forfeit, meaning you shouldn't even step on the bus and go to the game. Your offense is dog trash. Let's do this. Oregon. Chip Kelly's offense is so unbelievable that let me show you what it was when you go and look on the old school Coach Huey forms. This is what you get. When you type in Chip Kelly on Coach Huey, you get over 26 results asking about his offense because everybody and their brother wanted to be the Chip Kelly offense. It's what gave the term face melter. It is what people enjoy. They set the world on fire from 2009 to 2013. Everybody wanted to be them. So where would I rank Chip Kelly's offense at in the spread? Well, it was innovative, it was amazing, it was fast-paced, and it scored a lot of points. You were always in a game when you did this. So I'm going to put it as the face melter. Come at me, but here's the thing. The face melter was named for Chip Kelly's offense. It was an inside joke for that type of spread offense. All of the football Karens hated it. They named it the face melter, and that's where we're at. Next up, we have Auburn's offense. Now, this is the thing. This was a gateway drug to the wing tee. See, everybody didn't want to run the wing tee because, let's be honest, it sucks. But they wanted to run wing tee concepts, and the best thing to do that was to do Gus Malzahn's offense because he utilized buck, he utilized counter, he had an H-back, he threw the ball, he hurried up. This revolutionized the high school level and got a couple of high school coaches, college coaches, I'm looking at you, Chad Morris, and it really help coaches say hey I'm a run first spread offense so that got the kids to come out but they were really still running wing T concepts so where would I rank this at well it's not a forfeit and it's not a youth ball only or at the middle school actually I'm going to be completely honest it is God tier it has to be God tier and the reason why is because some people don't fully understand it didn't like running it would go H back and then try to have like all these air raid concepts and you couldn't do that at the high school level because of the H back was really just a glorified guard that is why it's at God tier but it's still pretty good if you have those you know what i'm gonna put it in between it's the face melter and god tier depending on your personnel but it is up there lane kiffin where would i put his offense well it's innovative it's up tempo he's borrowed from a lot of great uh offenses and kind of mashed them together and created a smorgasbord of offenses it is fun to watch i'll always have it dvr'd i know a lot of people like you are wondering how he runs it he has gotten from some of the best minds to come and then he's put his own twist on it i hate him because he has unleashed this offense at auburn but it's freaking unbelievable to watch but where does it rank in the spread where would it go on this chart so it's, it's not any of these, obviously, because if it was a forfeit, Alabama wouldn't have won all their national championships using his type of offense and modifying it a little bit. I, I'm going to be honest, guys. It's been unstoppable. It's a face melter. This offense right here is so difficult to stop, especially when you have the players like Alabama does. It can melt your face. Ask Clemson. Ask Georgia. Ask any of the SEC. 
They can't stop it. That is why it's melting their face off like it's Indiana Jones. I'm going to be completely honest. Baylor is one of my favorite offenses. It's like that unicorn. It's still secretive. I know some coaches that have given me a little bit of tidbits on how they run the deep choice and and all of those routes, what their thought process is and everything, but no one has broken ranks. It is now the John Jenkins 2.0 in the regards of secrecy. But I love it. It is unbelievable. The only thing that could stop it is the force of God, that hurricane when it was coming in a downpour. Where do I rank it? Where does the Art Bryles type of offense go? Because this had success wherever it went. Baylor, FSU, they were good on offense. FAU, they're now doing some things at Arkansas. It's unbelievable. Let's be honest. Let's call a spade a spade. If you go back and look at offensive production for the past 15 years, that string of Baylor teams is always in the top 10. So it is a face melter. If you don't like it, shut your mouth. Next up, we have Mike Leach's Air Raid. Now, Mike Leach has taken what How Mummy did, kind of put his little twist on it, and has exploded. It is unbelievable. He's had success at everywhere possible. Now, shut your damn mouth if you say that since Mike Leach hasn't won any national championships, he is garbage and his offense is garbage. Everybody else on here hasn't really won a national championship, so shut your mouth. He has helped make teams that were dog water into viable contenders using just a handful of plays from the spread and repping them over and over again. So where do I put the pirate at? Well, obviously it's not a forfeit and it's not youth ball because a lot of coaches don't want to run this type of offense on the youth level because they're afraid of it. Middle school, yes. High school, heck yeah, it's decent. Got tier, yeah. Unbelievable. I think that this is mesh is God's play. It's not the veer and it's not the buck sweep. It is mesh. God was like, you know what? That's it. It's perfection. I can't do anything else with it. It's a face melter. Hands down, face melter. Unbelievable. It's unstoppable when ran correctly. And if you don't put your own plays on it, you just run the core plays. You can't beat it. Okay. Let's let's go to the next one. Lincoln Riley is a protege of Mike Leach. His story is unbelievable. He came from a, like a four-string quarterback, was garbage. He got cut, but it, Leach brought him back on as a GA. He worked himself up all the way to where he's at now at Oklahoma. He probably will go to the NFL. I don't know. I'm just putting that out there, but I would like to see him there. He's been courted by some of them. His offenses are unique because he has actually combined a decent run game with the air raid principles, and it's unbelievable. Teams in Oklahoma and Texas love love it. They want to run it. It's kind of like a souped up Auburn on steroids since you're taking that H back. You're running some counters and different things like that. But the innovation is unbelievable and is undeniable because he does some things on Saturdays where you're like, holy crap, how did he do that? Let me go research it. But he's young and that kind of hinders him a little bit in the eyes of the old heads, the Karens of football. But where is his offense at? Well, let's be honest. He should have beaten uh, Georgia in the Sugar Bowl, or it was the Rose Bowl. I can't really remember. But he had them. He was like, I'm going to, you can't stop it. But then he took his foot off the brake, off the gas. And that is when Georgia was able to claw back in. And that was a killer thing. But he he has learned from it. He's gotten better. He's going to dominate the SEC right now. Uh, Honestly, it's, it's a face melter. If you don't agree with me, I'm sorry, if it wasn't, why would the SEC want them in there? Because they are such a high-powered offense. Next up is Ed Orgeron and the LSU. I know it was just one thing. A lot of people say that was Brady going uh, offense, and he took that from the Saints. I really don't care. Joe Burrow and that entire crew was unbelievable. Every single game was a must-watch because they were so simple, yet they were just scoring so many points. I mean, this is an easy one, guys. Uh, it, it helped Orgeron upgrade his his everything. Finally got him over the hump. They stopped talking about how he's a trash uh, a head coach. Coach and is no one's going to beat the records that LSU had. A uh, face melter, hands down face melter. I mean, it's honest. If you don't think about it, go back to Twitter on the time machine and look up all the threads that are like, "Hey, how do you run LSU's offense?" It's it's incredible. Coaches love it. If you don't love it, if you didn't enjoy watching it, you're full of it. Last but not least is the flex bone. Listen, I have a soft spot in my heart for Paul Johnson. He is unbelievable. He has had success everywhere he has been. 
it's he started out pass first and a run and shoot because as you know a lot of the flex bone coaches like to throw shade saying that this is a pass first offense it's not but I understand it you want to be in this conversation right here it is unbelievable it helps neutralize talent if you don't have the talent on the field you can run this it's won them the orange ball it's unbelievable and I love the swag of coach Paul Johnson so where would I rank it obviously you need a quarterback you need some b-backs and running backs that's something that a lot of flex bone coaches don't talk about they like to on air raid coaches and and pass first offenses but they never talk about what they need so where would i rank this well obviously it's not a face melter and it's not really god tier because a lot of teams don't run it some teams like coastal carolina and Toledo and stuff run different types of stuff with it, but it's not a true flex bone. It is the option. Um, it is decent to run in high school, but I, I don't know. It's really hard. Not that many high. You know what? Just forfeit. Just don't even go to the game. 